Hey guys, welcome to the survival series in Unity 5 and this is part 2 and we'll be looking into doing the UIs and things like that. And here you'll see an example in the bottom corner of the UIs that we're going to create with the Unity UI system. And it's a lot easier than how if you saw my other video series, it's a lot easier than doing that before. And we'll be able to see it um, knock down and then it'll um, change the health, fall down over time and we'll set some variables so we can change these um, you know, degrading values on the fly. So without further ado, we'll get straight into the series. So, um, you may have seen the part one and it was just creating a terrain and showing you the basic elements to going about making it. Now, I, I was looking on the asset store and a few people had asked me to recommend things that might help them in the future. Now, there's a, a nice asset here, which you can see, um, that I could play and play around in. So if you're looking for something nice for your, um, if you're gonna be creating your own survival game and you want it set in some sort of like uh, nice wooded area, more of a foresty area than would a tropical island, then there might be a pack for you. You can always look on the stores yourself. And this one here is the realistic nature environment. And it's a really nice pack, various um, trees and bushes, 30 tree models, plenty of grass textures, lots of different bushes, all really nice textures. Put some image effects over the top of that and you can make yourself a really nice scene. So what we're going to do today is start by doing the UIs that we want to create. So what I'm going to do is if I go to the scene view, I go 2D view. and we'll get the ability to do stuff in the UI. So what I want to do is first create off a little panel that our stuff can go into. So we can go game object to UI and we can go to panel. And it'll create a canvas for us and then we can click on the canvas and press F and it'll focus into that canvas for us. Now we can select the panel, make sure we're on the scale tool at the end and we can just bring that panel all the way down there and you can test it in game by flicking across and you can see our panel there and that's all very nice what you could do is we can make this slightly darker this panel so you'll be able to see your UIs over it maybe a little bit better so from there what we can do is we can select the canvas again we can go game object UI and slider and from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the slider at the bottom corner here. I'm going to go over to this side and set the anchor point to the bottom left, just so it always sticks in this bottom corner nicely. And then what we can do is if we drop down the slider, you can see there's a few things that make up the slider. And you can see that if I zoom in all the way, we can adjust this slider. And this is going to be the basis to our health bar, thirst bar, hunger bar. And what we can do is we can initially get rid of the handle so you can drop down the slide area, delete the handle. If we go back to the main slider, you can see that now we've got a little bar that moves up. What we can do is we can rename this main slider to health slider just to make things consistent. What we can do is we can change the background and that's gonna affect the color on the um, object that's behind. So what we can do is we can set that to a red and we can set in the fill area, we can open up the fill and set this to a green. And this can represent the health that we're going to have for this. So we could close that up and you can see that we get the bar that moves up and down. One thing that you will notice on the actual slider is if we go all the way to 100% or all the way to zero, it doesn't exactly meet up properly. So what we can do is we can leave it on all the way on the value of one, at 100%. And what we can do is we can set get the scale tool at the top here. And we need to make sure that everything's at the very edges of the things that we want. So what we can do is we can select the fill area. What we can do is we can drag the fill area out and just to the end of where the red goes. And we can drag 
the fill area to the very edge of the encapsulation. So say we're here, just drag it all the way out to the end till it snaps to the this bounding area. Then we can just grab the fill and take this back slightly so it again matches the box that we've got. And then if you go to the slider, you can slide it all the way back down to nothing and then all the way to full. What we might want to do is add a little piece of text. So what we can do here is go game object UI and text. We'll get a new piece of text and we can call this health text. Then what we could do is just rename this to health. We can then set this to a white color. So if you select the color and set it to white, then what we'll do is we'll just grab the move tool and pull it below the health bar like that. What we can do then is create go game object, create empty, and we're going to create an empty game object and call this health UI so we can keep it all nicely arranged together. What we're going to do is set the x, y, and z to 0, 0, 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this health UI into our panel. Then we're going to put our slider and our text into the health UI game object. So we've got everything inside each other. Now in the game, you'll be able to see your health bar at the very bottom. And that's all well and good, and that's perfect. So if we go to the health bar UI, open that out, go to the slider, you know, we can adjust this accordingly to however we want it to be. And that's perfect for this. We can go back into the scene view again. What we can do is we can duplicate health UI pull this across and then duplicate it again, pull this across again and we're just going to get duplicates of the same thing which is fine. We can rename this one to first UI, this one to hunger UI and then open up the first UI bracket. What we can do here is change this one to first slider and I'm sure you see where I'm going and I'm just going to change this to first text. It's just so we can keep it all nicely organized. And all I'm going to do is change this hunger to hunger slider and hunger health. So I'll skip on. So from there, with those two open, you can go to the first slider, open that out, go to the background. Well, before we do that, we'll select the slider and we'll just pull it down so we can see it. Go to the background and we'll leave that red. And what we can do for the first, we'll go to the fill and we'll change this to maybe a blue. So then it looks like thirst this time. And we can close that up, go to the thirst text and just type in thirst here. All nice and neat. And then we can go to the uh, hunger slider, pull that down, rename the hunger text to hunger. Go to the hunger slider, go to the fill, fill, and hunger could be whatever you want. We could have it as orange for the sake of this. And now you can see in our game view, you can see the health, thirst, and hunger UIs nicely in the corner. But before you test your game, you want to make sure that your panel is also pivot. Um, is anchored to the bottom left as well so you don't get any strange sort of scaling issues and when you drop in to test your game everything will be fine. So when we finish that we'll start by writing the script to control how the things will degrade so what we'll do is we'll make sure that everything's at 100% so we'll go on each of the sliders and make sure they're all the way at 1 so we can have any so we don't actually get any problems. What we can do is right click on the project, go create and C sharp. And what we'll call this is player vitals, something like that, just so it, it encapsulates everything that we're going for. Then open up in your coding editor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop these curly brackets down, get rid of things in the beginning. And then what I'm going to do is start by writing a few public variables. And we're going to be able to access the sliders and change the values thereafter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write public slider, but we need to be able to get access to the UI elements with Unity. So at the top here, we're going to say using Unity 
engine dot UI and then we're going to go back to the public that we just created delete what we put in and then we'll have access to slider and then we're going to call this health slider and then what we're going to do is we're going to add another one public slider and we'll call this first slider then public slider hunger slider with a semicolon and now that's perfect now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop in between these few and leave a sort of line break so we're going to let's set this code neatly out then we're going to have a public integer which is going to be max health and then we're going to have one below there another public integer called health fall rate with a semicolon and I'll go through this as I'm going along another public integer and as you might guess we're going to have it max first but make sure you keep everything spelled correctly public integer first fall rate and similarly I'll just copy these two lines again and I'll paste it under here and we're just going to change this to I'll copy hunger and I'll have max hunger and hunger fall rate and I'll just put a capital after this max hunger so from there what we're doing is we're going to be able to reference the slider that we need we want to be able to set the max health so we can never go beyond it we want to set how quickly each of the um, things fall so what we're going to do um, underneath the last variable is we're going to start by writing void start two brackets then two curly brackets below there and we want to say that health slider dot max value equals max health with a semicolon and then what I also want to say is health slider dot value equals max health as well so what this is going to do is going to set the max value of the slider to whatever we set as the max health and also the value which it starts at is going to be set to whatever max health equals so it's just going to um, initiate everything nicely so we don't have to do anything then um, as you can imagine I'm going to say first slider dot max value equals max thirst with a semicolon and first um, slider again dot value equals max first and then similarly like for say a hunger slider dot max value equals hunger max hunger and then hunger slider dot value equals max hunger the same color well I'll save that out and I'll show you this in the inspector that when we look at the We'll look at the first person controller and I'll drag player vitals onto there. I'll just close everything up so we don't have to look at it. What it's saying is that we're going to be adding the health, the other sliders in here, setting a, a max first, because the thing what it's got to do in your slider is it's got to set a min value, a max value, and the actual value that it currently owns. So if we set the max value to 100, it would be set to one because the inspector said it. So we've got to default it to whatever we want based on this. So if we put this max health at 100, and then what we added in the health slider, we'll do it for all of them. So I'll add all the sliders in. So then I'll add thirst slider and I'll add a hunger slider. And we can set these to 100 as well and that's 100 as well so what you can see is that you see these are in the inspector cell one on one if i don't maximize on play and press play you'll notice that when we play it sets them both to 100 ready to go when we need it in the script so from here What we want to be able to do is start by doing some things, so it'll start counting down. So we're going to have void update 
then with two brackets and then two curly brackets below. I'm going to start by looking at the health uh, controller part. I'm going to see how the health needs to degrade. So we're going to say that if hunger slider dot value is less than or equal to zero and and open brackets first slider dot value is less than or equal to zero then below those two brackets that we just created we'll add two curly brackets and say that health slider dot value minus equals time dot delta time divided by the health fall rate times by two the se uh, semicolon so what this means is that if um, the hunger value that we've got on the bar is let is there zero and the thirst is zero as well we're gonna set um, we're going to make sure that the health slider counts down over you know delta time which is over you know frames and then we're going to divide it by the fall rate that we want and we're going to times it by two to make sure it's faster now we're going to do a similar thing for if either of thirst or hunger is down at zero because one might start before the other and health won't decrease as quickly but if they're both down at nothing health will decrease much faster so then we're going to say that else if open brackets hunger slider dot value is less than or equal to zero. We're gonna have two um, line breaks in here almost, and it's between Z and the shift key on the keyboard, and you hold shift and you press the black slash key and you create these, and that just does two symbols mean either this or that. So if the hunger slider dot value is less than zero or the thirst slider dot value is less than or equal to zero, then what we're going to do is add two curly brackets below, as you would imagine. And we'll copy this line again like we had there. But instead, this time, we'll just take away the times two. So it falls more slowly. And then what we can do below here, that we'll say that if health slider dot value is less than or equal to zero, then we'll add two brackets below and we'll say that you know we'll call a function called character death with um, two brackets and a semicolon. And what we can do is we can create this function down here so we can say void character death two brackets and two curly brackets and we can say you know do something here whether this is loading a new scene or whatever you need it to do. And so that controls the health and how that falls. Health doesn't fall down automatically unless, you know, those are the two bars um, are affected. So what we can do is we can start by adding another comment here. And we'll call this hunger controller. So we'll call it the section that we're going to control the hunger. So then we're going to say that if hunger slider dot value is ever greater than or equal to zero, We'll add two curly brackets below there. We'll say that hunger slider dot value minus equals time dot delta time divided by the hunger fall rate with a semicolon. And that just means that if the hunger value is ever greater than zero, so that means if you've still got a little bit of the bar left, we're just going to start counting down, so losing hunger over time. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say else if hunger slider dot value is ever less than or equal to zero so it's, if it's ever at the bottom we want to make sure that the hunger slider dot value is equal to zero so we can never go below zero to a point where we might go into minus figures and if we collected some food and we added to it it would never adjust it so we don't want to be able to go below zero then we want another else if statement and we'll say that hunger slider dot value is ever greater than or equal to um, the max hunger that we've set in the script we'll have two curly brackets below and say that hunger slider 
dot value equals max hunger. So just like with the zero, you couldn't go below zero. We're never going to allow it to go past the maximum hunger, so we don't end up breaking the game. All this, really, this programming is is just a way to go about stopping the player doing things that they shouldn't be able to do, and they shouldn't be able to break your game. And it's just the logic that goes behind it. So you need to think of what people might do in your game. And then we'll call this part the first controller. And we're going to do something extremely similar to what we did above. So I will copy the entire um, three sort of statements that we had. I'll paste them in below. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change that to first slider. So what I'll do is I'll copy first slider paste it in each time that I see slider elsewhere but in these we need to change this to first fall rate so first fall rate that's all good and then maximum first and we'll copy that and then paste it here and we'll press save so we're just doing the same thing as hunger so we'll be able to and make sure it doesn't go above and below the maximum amounts and for also falls when it's above zero. So what we can do is we can minimize this script. We can go back onto our first person controller where we've added our player vitals. If you've not added that yet, you can do that now and you can add in your sliders just by dragging them from there. Is that maximum health, thirst and hunger are all equal to 100. And we're going to just add a value in to make sure how these actually fall away. So what we're going to do is we're going to initially set the health fall rate to 5, the thirst to 2, and maybe the hunger to 4. And we can see what these do over time. And you can see that the thirst is counting down. Um, ever so small um, quickly than the hunger so the smaller the value um, the faster it will actually count down so if I put that at 1 and we put that at 6 for the thirst and the hunger we'll get the thirst count um, you know, sort of going down much faster and we can click on these sliders and you can see over time how it's affecting it and we can make it quicker or um, more slowly by adjusting the say max thirst so say you want the thirst to, to tick down quicker we can just put 50 in the max thirst and have it degrade at 1 and you can see that it's slipping down much more quickly than the hunger because maybe that's more realistic you would die of thirst before hunger so what we could do is we could set both um, max hunger and max thirst to 10 and have them fall down at 2 and 6 and it'll go down much more quickly so when we get down to the bottom you will notice that the health will start to degrade due to the thirst So you can see the health slowly degrading and what I can do is I can speed up the hunger degrading if I set that to 1 and it ticks down much quicker. So really that's pretty much the fundamentals of creating your UIs with a simple slider some text and a panel. Um, we can adjust the script by we've just got some variables which control the maximum amount and the fall rate and we put the sliders in there then we're just having the update function to control how um, how they fall whether they can go above and beyond the amount specified and whether or not the hunger and the thirst um, can go above and beyond the maximum values and just stopping it in case you can you know use um, drink some water or anything like that so this is just the base to creating any sort of survival system that you that you want and it's just a simple UI and thanks to Unity 5 it's made it a, a lot lot easier to you know make something a little bit more um, nice looking and easier to customize. 
So again, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.